This is the story of many small and large journeys. Nobody's journeys and past time journeys. They are journeys that brought ideas and forms from this. Journeys that went beyond what there was a huge unknown sea. Going towards the new world and taking new ways of understanding civilization. Journeys which returned from that new world full of precious metals. Journeys which during the Renaissance brought from Italy to Spain the splendor of the age of man and new artistic forms. Journeys which in the following centuries took Spanish artists new ideas to Italy. And also our own journey of apprentices of exploration, art and culture, a journey of personal impressions. After the footprints of the Renaissance and the Baroque, a bridge over northern Italy and southern Spain. The Sea This is Venice. Some of its wealth came by sea between the 13th and 15th centuries and was used to embellish its canals with a buried architecture. But what made Venice so special? There is something harmonious about how its palaces and churches are reflected in the water and the arrival of the Renaissance treated Venice perfectly. This is the view. A lot of wealth came by the sea between the 15th and 17th centuries, and the city became a center for merchandise, arriving at its port, a center of ideas and culture that came from and went to America, a center to store riches, which allowed them to build houses, palaces, like Las Dueñas. Our view runs along these facades of perfect elements and rows of windows or arches which recur over and over again. Like the current parliament of Andalusia, the University of Milan was also used as a hospital, the Greater Hospital, or Cangranda. It was one of the first civil renaissance buildings in Italy, but although it has a sober style, it still shows some of the typical Gothic styles in the Lombardy. These renaissance facades show patterns of harmonic lines and our lines follow the vanishing point, which the renaissance art masters so well. The Hospital of the Five Wounds of Seville, now the Andalusian Parliament, also shows rows and windows with their pediments and gargoyle and many other elements that we already know of the Italian Renaissance. Symbols of Power 
The S Forsesco Castle in Milan was the center of the luxurious court of Ludovico Sforza, the Moor. Imposing and full of beautiful rooms and fantastic works of art inside, its construction attracted great Renaissance artists such as Leonardo da Vinci and Donato Bramante. It was built to show the power of the Sforza family until the Emperor Charles V took over Milan. And we are going to bump into this empire again in our project. This is La Alhambra in Granada, a huge complex of buildings mainly from the time of the Muslim rule in the Iberian Peninsula. But this enormous palace with elements of the Italian Renaissance was built by Carlos V, practically on top of the Nazareth palaces, which dominated the last Muslim kingdom in Spain. The palace was never finished, but Christian kings respected the beauty of Muslim buildings. Leonardo Our books say that at the end of the Renaissance, many Spanish artists traveled to Italy and found inspiration in the great Italian artists, such as Leonardo, the complete artist of the Renaissance. We think that Leonardo is an influence that goes beyond art. Milan is lucky to enjoy lots of works by this genius. Santa Maria delle Grazie, an elegant Renaissance church, has Leonardo's Last Supper, a fresco which would become a strong inspiration since the moment it was created. And this is the Ambrosiana Library and Art Gallery. The Atlantic Codex is preserved here and is full of Leonardo's great ideas and inventions science, engineering, architecture, astronomy, urbanism, anatomy, zoology. Or poetry. No student should feel far from that passion to discover and investigate what the Renaissance and Leonardo left us. Perspective and Spaces We have learned that during the Middle Age there was only God. Art was interested in God and the most essential goal was to express the spiritual world. So the painting used icons to express that spirituality. It did not matter if the image seemed real or inexpressive. However, the Renaissance, which really means reverse, broke back not only the elements of the Greek and Roman world, but also a new stage in which man was the center of attention, not God. So we reached a moment when painting showed perspective and man also moved in three dimensions. The frescoes in the Portinari Chapel in Milan are like this. The life of St. Peter of Verón is shown with a deep background and space around. In fact, the chapel itself seemed like another element where the frescoes were alive. And so, 
in the Renaissance, we work on the perspective and investigating how to give depth to the representation of reality. In addition, artists such as Bramante use artistic tricks, optical illusions such as the trunk alloy of the shard of Santa Maria Presos and Satyro, where an apse of only 19.7 cm is created thanks to the conical perspective. Dome. In Venice it is easy to think about everything that the West received from the East. The Byzantine domes of the Basilica of San Marco are a good proof of this. It is true that creating a dome is a challenge, a magnificent element that makes us raise our eyes to heaven, and which is decorated with paintings or which is built on a tumble, or which allows a small tower on the top. The architects of the Renaissance picked up the challenge when they knew about the domes of the mosques that were being built in Istanbul in the middle of, of the 16th century. They represented the victory of faith. From their own words, domes embellish the art of the Renaissance and all the art that followed afterwards like the Baroque. And also, not less important, on the road of our journeys, we discovered what other surprises the buildings of the Renaissance have left us. Semicircular arches and barred vaults, archives and arcaded areas. Grotesque and balustrades, rusticated hustlers and decoration of medallions. Everything fits together, everything is harmonious. Facades and elements are like a holiday for our eyes. Have a look at this little jewel hidden in the narrow street of Venice. The main element here is the use of colored marble, which makes the Church of Santa Maria dei Miracoli a masterpiece of the Renaissance Quattrocento. When the Protestant Reformation arrived with Luther, art was used as a disseminator of ideas for the Catholic Church, and so we find buildings like San Luis de los Franceses in Seville. And what does a church like this try to tell us? It seems as if the enormous power of the church were expressed through art. It is an adaptation to the new times. The Baroque style comes to us in a more dramatic way than the forms of the Renaissance. There are no open spaces and the sorrow of vacui, or fear of emptiness in Latin, makes us think that the house of God is splendid. That's the idea. But that end of emptiness also reaches man. Leonardo's Vitruvian man seems beautiful, natural and perfect, but he doesn't suffer, he doesn't seem real. In the Baroque temple of San Bernardino Leosa in Milan, the bones of the dead seems to remind us one of the Baroque themes, how close death is to life. Memento mori, that's to say, remember that you will die. These bones, taken from an old cemetery, are the decoration of a chapel dedicated to death.
The Images of Pain It's in the Baroque age when in painting and sculpture the images suffer and the feelings come strongly to the viewer. The Passion of Jesus is an exceptional attempt to capture the most human feelings, pain, anguish or suffering. The Andalusian sculpted images of Holy Week teach us perfectly that way of understanding an art and life by means of very strong and deep feelings. But we have found something similar in the Via Sacra de Bares. Different chapels in different styles take us to a high place on the top of a hill on a pilgrimage through images of the Passion of Jesus. A perturbing experience. In our days of this learning journey, many of us have understood Baroque art as the dynamic brother of the Renaissance art. A door is not closed and the Renaissance is over. No way. Or another door opens and behind it suddenly there is the Baroque age. Not at all. It takes a time to adapt to new artistic ways. According to what we have learned, there was a time called Mannerism, when the spirit of the Renaissance was still alive and beginning to break the straight lines and make the buildings vibrate, move the sculptures and twist the painted bodies. Baroque art came little by little, to be seen with volumes that come out and into the façade with interiors that are not so symmetrical, but have something theatrical and uh, enveloping, following the idea of being expressive to the limit. Watching a Baroque building is usually an exhausting experience. A little of mannerism. This is the beautiful building of the Museum of Fine Arts in Seville, one of the most important art galleries in Spain. Its beautiful courtyards and all its structure follow the Andalusian mannerism. Let's say that it was the last stage of the Renaissance in the region. Inside the walls of what was the monastery of La Merced, there are three beautiful courtyards whose design recalls the atrium of the Roman domus or house. Also this mannerist start appeared on our trip, many kilometers away from Seville. When you look from the Piazzetta of Venice at the Lagoon towards the church of San Giorgio Maggiore, its classic marble facade shines on its island and time stops. The light of the twilight increases its shadows on its marble. like life itself. Spanish Baroque painting is quite natural and simple, it's a piece of reality. There are many different topics, but most of them related to religion, saints or virgin, are very frequent themes, but also we find the poorest of those time as the protagonists of the pictures. The Spanish Golden Age was a time when wealth and poverty lived together, while the Spanish Empire was beginning to start its decadence. At the Museum of Fine Art in Seville, the painter Murillo sadly has, as if he were also there listening to what Seville looked like in 16th and 17th century, and also looking at his immaculate 
at his children full of color, at the light and shadow of his pictures, at his ability to express emotion, expression, feelings. The people in those paintings seem to have been taken from familiar characters of the painter or from real street people, just as if they were flesh and bones. We chose Murillo to represent so many fabulous Spanish Baroque painters. He never traveled to Italy or to any other country, but in his birthplace, Seville, he showed a great talent for all the new techniques that came from other places. Surprising combinations. Just when we start learning about the history of art, we can help asking ourselves in front of a cathedral, a palace, or any other building if it is Gothic, Renaissance, or Baroque art. Frequently, a building is the result of some century of things. That's what has always happened throughout the history of mankind. Let's consider this building an amazing example of our combination, the Moose of Cordoba. When we walk through the symmetrical arcade of this jewel of the Spanish Islamic art, we feel in a forest of stone palm trees. We are surrounded by semi darkness but suddenly, just in the center of the mosque, it becomes a Renaissance Catholic cathedral full of light and decoration. It's up to you to say if you like it or not, but it is the way many buildings show their history. A true bridge of emotions. At the end of his life, Michelangelo focused on another piece. He couldn't finish it, but inside yourself, we really saw it finish in our visit to Milan. In a hall of the Sforzelco castle, the Peter Rondanini shines with his own light. Michelangelo is one of those bridges between the pure Renaissance and other forms that could come later with the Baroque. Sitting there, we silently was the figure of the Virgin. A figure torn by pain train to save her son from the abyss of death. It is an almost magical relationship as if both figures floated trying to join in a single emotion. Art and life. After all the interior and exterior trips that we achieved in our project, We came to the conviction that works of art, buildings, paintings or sculptures speak of the men who created them and beside this, they take us to other times. But overall, art and works of art make us better and make this world worthwhile.